You're listening to Nerd Sweat. Nerd Sweat Episode 2. I am your host, Chris, and to my left is the man who stings like a butterfly and floats like a bee, Andy. Oh, well, that's backwards, but I'm still Andy. <laughs> and to Andy's right is the man whose no's mean yes, and his yeses mean yes, Brian. Hi, guys. All right. So we got the uh, the two boys back, and uh, we're hitting everybody now with their second episode. We got some decent feedback from last time. Uh, yeah. A little too long. So we're going to try and aim for an hour. I like how we said that, too, at like the halfway point, then the two-thirds point, then the, yeah. all the way through. Yeah, this is going a little bit too long. I, I know and everybody happened to say, this is going too I think we just put it in their heads. I think they really liked it naturally, but... Yeah. <laughs> so we're saying, what, big and natural? or we, we, <laughs> I think we're, we're in agreement, so this big and natural is the best. Three, <laughs> This episode will be three and a half hours long. And a half count of hours. <laughs> Uh, All right, we'll see how things roll. So uh, <laughs> let's get things rolling. Uh, we're going to go into our first segment. Geek news of the week. We have at the top that, like, of our Steph, list. That was awesome. I know, I tried. <laughs> I tried my best, eh? I'm like, listen, I need you to say it like this. If you can, you're cut. You're cut. Yeah, take the dog and get out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, our first topic for Geek News of the Week is the DuckTales Remastered. <laughs> Uh, we all have uh, our own opinions, pretty much the same, but uh, we'll start with uh, Brian and what he thinks about the new DuckTales Remastered version. Okay, so I'm not such a fan of DuckTales Remastered just because, and this is me pre-playing it. I haven't gotten it yet, I haven't played it, I've just heard some talk about it not being so great. It's uh, My problem is, is it's been tried before. We had Turtles in Time is one of my all-time favorite games, which is going to hopefully be a segment one day, but Mm. one of my all-time favorite games, Turtles in Time, it was Turtles 4 for the SNES. It was a classic game. Me and my friend played it all the time, beat it quite a few times. Probably the first game I ever beat all the way through. Just beat it. Oh, just beat it. Beat it! Beat it! and, And they remastered it for the Xbox Live Arcade, and I think PlayStation as well did it, and it was awful. If anybody's played it, like, I feel bad for you, just like me and my buddy Dan, who actually paid for it. <laughs> and uh, it was it was pathetic. They, the physics were different. The music was different. The health system was different. The point system was different. Everything was wrong. If you could have made HD graphics with that great game, instead of changing the game, it would have been great. They even cut, they used the arcade levels in that, instead of giving us what most people would have played is the home version, right? That game sold like gangbusters. Everybody had a copy of that. Just Why could we get that? Oh, it was, it just made me so upset. So DuckTales <laughs> Remastered, another classic game that they're going to do the same thing to, and that's just, like, DuckTales is so fun. Did you Why play uh, the original NES version? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I sure did. Okay. The uh, Scrooge McDuck with the... Uh, red, the red cape? Or yeah, is that, with the is that sweater with vest or whatever. The, the, <laughs> it was it was my uh, cousin's NES, but uh, the only thing I can really remember is him being able to do the jumping on the pogo stick cane, and me not being able to jump on the pogo stick cane. <laughs> I think I almost threw my controller through the TV at that point. <laughs> trying to do it, it was yeah. it was it, it's the uh, Mario World trying to fly with a cape when you're six years old, yeah. trying to do that, and your dad being able to do it and just yeah. trying to explain it to you, and you can't do it. Can't get the that timing was, down. Couldn't get it down. Just that, could not do it. You do know that that because uh, Ducktales was made by Capcom, and the uh, the Ducktales uh, engine was actually the Mega Man engine. So if you enjoyed Mega Man, uh, you also enjoyed the the Ducktales because it was wow. a side scroller. I don't I don't know if you knew that or not, but no. if you actually look at That's it now when you play it, you'll, you'll, I, you'll, oh wow, it is Mega Man. It's, we gotta go. we gotta do a back to back play of that. 
Yeah, so when you see him going up and down this cane and everything, and like all the, the dungeons, how they're how, everything's set up, it, it just screams Mega Man. So when you play Mega Man, you play DuckTales, and you're like, okay, cool. Yeah, it's different characters, but yeah, stamp of different abilities and, and stuff. But yeah, okay, cool, same engine. Sweet. All right, so we got Brian's uh, two cents, and let's get Andy's three cents. Well, again, like <laughs> I don't have three cents, so <laughs> um, I got like a half a penny here. The I haven't played it, um, but. I mean, I kind of agree with everything Brian said. Uh, just the reviews from everybody else that I've I've heard it from, and I mean, you go to the store and you pick up a physical copy, but what are you getting? You're getting like an empty case with a, an access code in it. I don't know. That's what it's on my cup of tea, really. Um, no, we kind of talked about that last week too, right? Like the cartridge. Yeah. We love holding that. We love. Uh, yeah, I didn't really want to read that, but exactly. I I want to have it in my hands. Yeah. I don't want a digital copy of stuff. I. I don't like that. What's the even point of, of putting it for sale? I don't know. Why would you even bother selling it on the shelf? If you can Why just... have the overhead, right? It's overhead. Yeah. You're paying an employee. You're paying yeah. the lighting in the store. You're renting the store. It's everything. It's expensive. I just, uh, I don't know. I I just hope they don't screw it up because, I don't know, I kind of like sometimes just to leave things the way they were Yep. And and just forget about coming back, like trying to reclaim old glory. Yeah, why not just go out and buy... Like, go to your flea markets, whatever, if you really love the game, or just try to find it in the garage sale, and buy that game, play it for the NES, and enjoy actually reliving what you got to play before. And, like, the one angle I can see is, is like, old uh, consoles were old. Like, they're old. They are they are dated now, just in terms... I'm not saying, like, old technology, which they are, and people enjoy that, but just the fact that they're old, and there's few and far between them, and, and the controls may not have been, the per, like, perfect, and, you know, electric, you know mechanical stuff wears out over time so if you want to put it onto the new console just get the rights and put the same game yeah yeah just like get the uh, same same game put it on I, xbox has an arcade you can go grab it off of there that you know, seems more play, reasonable playstation to me. does it yeah, yeah that's and i'm sure you can get it at a cheaper price you don't have to yeah. throw the word remastered and try to get the money grab i don't know and and unfortunately i think they are going to screw it up so whatever i'm not i'm probably not going to get it that's unfortunate, but I probably won't. <laughs> uh, I played the original. I really enjoyed the original. Like I said earlier, I'm a huge Mega Man fan. Played them all as a kid. Played DuckTales. I love DuckTales. I love Darkwing Duck. They're both solid games for me. Um, I saw the DuckTales remastered online. I was really interested in it. I, I looked up some, some reviews and stuff. <clears throat> pardon me. I'm dying. <laughs> I, <clears throat> I'm good now. So pardon. Okay. So yeah, I was reading reviews on it, and a lot of people are complaining about the same thing, saying that there's way too many cutscenes, and you can't skip through the cutscenes. You actually have to go to the menu uh, to get through the cutscene. What? And not only this, when you get uh, when you start playing through the game, you hit spots uh, that you already went to. The game doesn't know that you went to that spot. That doesn't save it. There's no coding that saves it, so you actually have to watch the cutscene. Re replay over the again. cutscene again. <laughs> So sometimes oh, people are re redoing it three times. Mm. So that's a huge annoyance. Um, on the other hand, people said, you know, visually it looks nice, uh, but it's really split down the middle because a lot of people who enjoyed the retro side of, of DuckTales uh, are loyal to that. And they said, well, you know, I thought you're bringing us something just more or less the same, but it's like, because the whole background, everything is like 3D rendered. And I, I dig it. It's kind of cool. And when I saw them in this cart and stuff, it kind of reminded me of Donkey Kong and... Um, Oh, like I was, I'm with Andy. I'm not gonna buy this. Um, <clears throat> there's just not enough for me, and, and especially when oh, the quest line. If you, if you were gonna make some repeat, I can't, I can't stand that. Repeat that's quest line. Thing. If you have to repeat something over or, and then it, oh. it doesn't know that I already done yeah, it. Yeah, that's oh man, and you can't skip it. Yeah, no, oh. I gotta go through the menu to skip it. I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah, just shut it off at that point. And then you want me to go to your store and then buy this game and then come home and put a code in to install it? Enough. Yeah. Just, just, <laughs> Just shut your mouth and yeah. walk away with your product. I there don't even go. care. It's just like the bad Girl Scout cookies. And that's what we think of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's that. Yeah. So that's DuckTales for us. Uh, another just quick little thing. Um, Secret of Mana turned 20 years old this year. Okay. Doesn't doesn't feel that long, but actually well, is. One of my it favorite does to RPGs. Me. That's your favorite RPG? Not, not the favorite. The oh, yeah, it's one of them? It's in my top ten oh, RPG. You go. I'd almost say it's second or third. Cool. So when we get Very into cool. uh, something later on in our future podcast. So that turns talk. 20 years old, wow. 
That dates us a bit, eh? Oh, no, well, that puts us right in the prime of uh, our freaking... Well, console and and when we were probably the most hyped about video games. That's pretty cool. That slams us yeah. in our Metroid prime. There you go. Oh, wow. I love that game. <laughs> now, Andy, Andy found this and brought it to our attention uh, about League of Legends, so I'm going to let Andy uh, just discuss this little new segment. Um, I was reading... Uh, where was I reading that? I don't know, just random internet information. Here we go. Uh, this League of Legends player, this Canadian player, he... Uh, do we have his name? Shifter is, is his handle. Um, I think Danny Lee. Anyway, yes. he's, he's become the first pro gamer uh, to receive a visa, like a travel visa, acknowledging him as uh, an international, like, recognized athlete. Uh, so That's pretty cool. So he gets, like, Kobe Bryant's visa. Like, <laughs> you know, like, you can travel, like, all over the world. Uh, you know, just no questions. Here you go. Keep going. You know, I, I thought that was pretty cool. Like, I don't know. Is this the, is this the first time somebody's yeah, yeah the first pro gamer? That's yeah. I don't know. That's pretty cool. I've never seen some like a pro gamer have. There's a, a lot of games like StarCraft, for instance. Like, there's crazy tournaments for StarCraft. Yeah. Like and, World of Warcraft yeah. never really got that same attention, but like StarCraft has it. I'm sure Diablo has something similar as well. Like, but I mean, League of Legends is is becoming this ridiculous beast of of online like game. I knew the game was big. But I, did, I didn't know it was. It's it's worldwide. That's the thing. I would have thought StarCraft before this, just because of all. I'm not being racist, but it started in Korea and it got huge there with all yeah. the people in it. That's got, not right. That's the fact. Yeah, that's it, not racism. It caught on fire in, in, in North America, and it's just it's huge. And then you tell me, and I look online, all these people daily that play League of Legends and online ladders and stuff, and just crushes StarCraft. It's, it's See the thing is the game is. It's my fiance's jam. It's her biggest game. She sits here and plays it all the time. Mm-hmm. It's just great. She, we we bought a new computer, and the main reason she wanted the new, I wanted it to get you know all sorts of great games and that whatever. She just wanted to be able to turn up the graphics on yeah. League of Legends, and that's pretty much all she plays on this new computer is a game that she was able to play on her old computer just with better graphics. Well, this game seems more appealing to uh, the female audience than StarCraft would. The thing about this game that I, okay, so I just started playing. Uh, so when I say just, I mean uh, three, four months ago. So like my talent level really isn't all that up there, and I'm telling you, it can take some talent. Um, it's it's a uh, it's a simple game. Yeah. Like there's there's three four buttons. I mean, okay, if you want to include your inventory, which is at six, then okay, technically you have ten buttons. Uh, but I mean, most of them are passive anyways. But anyway. There's, there's four buttons that you typically use, and those are just your moves. They got cooldowns like everybody's accustomed to from WoW. You don't have, like, this plethora of, of like, 20 different keys that you can hit and, you know, and, like, these key bindings and all that jazz. It's four buttons. Yeah. So it's it's just simple, and, and people get it right away. It doesn't take a genius to figure it out. Um, if you want to go through all the math and figure out, like, who's, who's better or who can challenge who, uh, you know, get all the terminology down... Once you start figuring that out, it, it, it becomes a bigger beast. But to start the game, you don't have to, like, you have to spend hours and hours and hours just, like, getting somewhere. You start, yeah. you're at the same spot as other people are. It's just, you can start, like, right away. And, and you're in, and you can just have some fun. There's no, like, like questing line. It's just, boom, tower defense, yeah. live. It's so, against PvP. That is, that's, that's really cool. Yeah. So, the, uh, so, with some people, I'm not sure whether you know or not, it's just a thing. Um, the game League of Legends was originally um, an add-on for the Warcraft 3 called Defenders of the Ancient, and that's when I originally first played it. And I thought the game was sick. I, I was like, I wasn't great at it. I always picked Tiny. I always picked Tiny with Blade Mail and a Dagon, and that, <laughs> that was that was my jam. But uh, after that, then came out um, Heroes of New Earth, and then uh, League of Legends, and then just League of Legends crushed Heroes of New Earth. But apparently, a lot of people still play Heroes of New Earth too. But, uh, yeah, it's it's a cool game, and uh, it's one of those games that I need to spend more time at and get into. And uh, It's very time-consuming, though. Yeah, I'd really don't... like to I'd like to talk to people on here that, you know, are hardcore, like my fiancé. It'd be great to hear some of those perspectives, hear the people who are have been playing it for years and are dedicated to it and love the little things, like how they update it all the time. They love to listen to their true. people, like, you know. Very so small many games passes, will... that's the best part about this game. Yeah, Very small exactly, passes. and like, oh, you think uh, one player is OP? Well, we'll fix that, no problem. 
We should have a game, three of us, recorded. That's nice. fun. That'd be hilarious. It's really that would fun. be good. Three noobs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and that's the, that's some of the best parts. It's like all of a sudden you're like, wow, I'm actually kind of good at this game. You just get it. Or you yeah. don't. I don't know. But, like, my sister plays it, and it's actually a really good point. It's actually a female targeted audience, too, because there's a lot of female characters. Yeah. And, and it's they're just, all heavy chested. It's, yeah, <laughs> lots of them are heavy chested. Yeah. So we're going to go into our next uh, piece of news, which is, uh, I'm not surprised, but I am at the same time. Now, uh, same to the guys who are, uh, Capcom not planning to bring Street Fighter to the Wii U. And I was saying to Andy earlier, and Brian said, what system doesn't have a Street Fighter game? This is not looking good for Nintendo at all. I concur. They're jumping out, they're folding. Like, like it's. I throw my cards away. I don't want to be. I don't want to get involved. Theme? Like, <laughs> it's, it's, seriously, every time somebody talks about this Wii U, uh, there's just all everybody says is developers are stopping production of this game. We're not heard, going forward with with getting this game released on that console. Yeah, I heard the same discussion about uh, Call of Duty. They're doing the same thing apparently. They don't want to Call of Duty on the Wii U because nobody, none of these major de- like we wouldn't call Street Fighter or Call of Duty minor no, uh, no. cogs in the wheel. They are uh, industry changers, right? Like they are the big guys, the big guns, and they don't want anything to do with it. They know that oh well, nobody wants it. Nobody's gonna buy one, so forget it. So I was at. Uh... Uh, the local giant tiger today, the GT Boutique. Oh, yeah, and, where I uh, got my $6 bathing suit for your yeah, party. I, <laughs> I remember Bright that. Bright orange. Too. Yeah, that was all <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, just doing the usual. Uh, sifting through. Right, yeah, just sifting through video games. I just go in the store. Somebody's looking at clothes. and yeah, see you later. I'm going video games. <laughs> so I go to the, the, the $20 bin. Okay, whatever. It's in here. I see the three consoles, right? I see the Wii. I see the Xbox 360, I see PlayStation 3. Oh, yeah, and there was some DS stuff in there, too. Um, okay, then I moved down to the $10 bin. And what do I find in the $10 bin? All the Wii U games. Wow. And, like, and so there's a lot of them because no one's buying them. All the other $10 games, because you know how they go cross-platform, right, with, like, a game and then it goes to all different consoles? Yep. Well, <laughs> all the ones for the other consoles had, like, two or three. The Wii U had 10 or 12 of them. Oh, just no. nobody's nobody's buying them. Yeah, like people are are expressing with their wallets, which is not typical with gamers, right? Like especially with Nintendo, uh, gamers will often just you know be complacent. Okay, I'll buy it. like we talked about last week. Okay, I'll buy another Mario game. I'll buy another Zelda game. I'll buy another Donkey Kong game. Whatever. This time, I think they're actually speaking. They're saying, you know what? We're sick of your attitude. We are tired of you releasing the being one generation behind, step it up or we're gone. That's the exact same so, uh, thing Seb said tonight when we were eating, that um, the Wii U is what the Wii should have been because yeah. that power should have been then and not that's right. now. Yeah. yeah, eight years ago. Huh. Yeah, that's that's really unfortunate. But, I mean, this this might be the, what would you say, the, the final straw on the camel's back that broke it? I hope they have something. Or? Hail Mary. Up. Yeah, or exactly. Is it the final straw, or is it what's going to wake them up? Are they going to say, okay, you know what, failure, we just lost how many millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. It's okay, we're Nintendo, let's reboot. Reboot! Oh, let's, this this let's, isn't the first time, though. No, they did it right before, oh, when the been, before it came out. Like, look at the right. 3DS. The 3DS lost so much money. Yeah, but they're making more money right now on their handhelds than they are on their system. Well, oh, I, you... I definitely agree, but it's like, yeah. it's like just look at the failure of, of the 3DS. I don't, I'm not saying it's a, it's bad. It's just it never caught on. No. So I don't know. I'm not sure uh, what's going to happen with Nintendo. And they've been a step behind for a long time, right? Like we, it wasn't as noticeable with the uh, N64, but it still it wasn't a PlayStation. It but wasn't the same power. They're choosing that, and it's wrong. It's yeah. true. Don't That's underpower true. your system, especially now. Yeah, like, especially now more when than ever. Pe- when the market wants graphics, like whether or not it's right for them to want it, like I don't care. When it wants it, you need to keep it going, or you're going to lose your company. Yeah. Like it's yep. just marketing, it's just business. You will lose your company. Mm-hmm. That would be insane. Oh, yeah. I would, yeah. I would. That would be a day to mourn. Like I love Nintendo, but I. Wouldn't wow. be, I wouldn't be shocked. Not even a little bit. I think you like every, well, not everybody, but I think most of us like who Nintendo was, not who Nintendo is now. Oh, 
A hundred percent. You're yeah. absolutely right. And you know what? Like we've been talking about retro games, your whole other YouTube series on this on our channel that you can uh, find. <laughs> eat config all. You can find all the rest of our console questions. Oh, the console questions. Oh, oh yeah, I heard about that. Guys. Yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, that went up today, eh? That's that is, uh, yeah, it did go up there. Yeah, episode yeah. one, ding ding. Get on there. There you go, ding ding. <laughs> but you know, like I love going back and playing these old games, getting. Star Fox 64 for my birthday last week was way more satisfying than I could possibly imagine getting any 3DS or Wii U game right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, imagine you got a Wii U game, be like, yeah, thanks. Now yeah, I'm gonna play exactly. It. Thanks, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> but honey, I got you the latest and greatest one. Yeah, well, it's gonna stay in its shrink wrap because we're not but playing it. Star Fox 64 and Rogue Squadron blew my mind, right? Oh, in. <laughs> oh, Star yeah, Fox let's get this going. Let's get the multiplayer. All right. Yeah, that's Look a those lot of games. Yeah. But uh, so the next piece of news is uh, a game that came out a, lo- a long time ago on PC, which is called Thief. Uh, they're doing a reboot in February 25th of next year. Now, That's a ways um, away. It is a ways away. Uh, this news just came out not too long ago. And uh, Edios, which has been around forever, it did the Tomb Raider games. It did. Uh, did it do Legacy of Kane as well? I think it might have. I don't know. But <clears throat> that seems like it would have. Yeah. yeah. It did some like um, uh, army games too, some like a uh, real time strategy, overhead type of uh, army game. But they're a decent decent company, uh, so they got a game coming out. It, I'm not sure if it's going to come out for the Wii U. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, maybe but, not. But uh, they say that 360, Xbox One, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and of course the PC. Um, Thief has always been a first person, semi stealth. Like uh, Brian was saying earlier, does it feel like a Splinter Cell? In a way, yeah, it does. You need to be quiet. You don't want to set off, you know, an alarm type of deal when more guys come. You want to try and... Because you, you are this type of rogue, stranger... That man in the corner. Who is he? He's one of them rangers. The dangerous folk they are, one in the wilds. What his right name is, I've never heard. But around here, he's known as Strider. Type of guy with the hood, and, you know, you're cutting them up, and you're shooting them down, and you're... Almost like an Assassin's Creed. You could say this is almost like the Assassin's Creed before it, that was created. Okay. So it but, is not Call of Duty then. Uh-huh. No, it, it's, it's not a Call, but <laughs> it is first person. Like you are, you are walking around in first person view. Nice. Uh, I'm not always sold in the first person view. Yeah, it, it either make it or you don't break it. Like, are you breaking or don't break it? But like Skyrim was first person. Oh, I, gold. Okay. Yeah, they Skyrim did it. They great. did it perfectly, right? But yeah. how often do they butcher, right? Goldeneye, perfect, great job. Yeah. So right there, looking it up, it says a Wii U version is not in development. No. Period. Yep. <laughs> oh man. No, that's it's another one. We face. just named three. It's gonna be a broken record. Before it's like Pac Man coming out in all systems, but Wii U. That's yeah. Right. Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Exclusive to PS4. Yeah. Nintendo won't even put its own games on its system. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. So, another piece of news is the online multiplayer revealed for the Grand Theft Auto V. I think we were talking <clears throat> a bit on this last week. We were. Brian. We sure did. <laughs> Brian is the Are you most. Dying? I know. Okay, okay, so I'll take over because Chris you. is dying. Yeah. Uh, Grand Theft Auto V, we did talk about it last week, but uh, I am so excited because this is breaking news. This is the new segment. My parents got the pre order for my birthday. My parents oh, yeah? are still cool and hip to me. Oh, hip right? parents. Yeah, they look. also got me a case of beer and the book I wanted. Well. You know, that's how cool they are. But uh, they, yeah, I, uh, I said, you know, that'd be a cool game. And like I said last week, I'm not allowed to play it when my fiance's home. But still, uh, yeah, the multiplayer on it, uh, we did touch on it, I think, last week. But it looks like it's, it's just massive. Open it, world it IDS. huge. The thing we've always dreamed of in Grand Theft Auto, right? Who hasn't sat there? Like, I always do my best thinking in the shower. It's, it's just because I have nothing better to do. Shampoo in my hand. I got to think of something. My brain can't sit stupidly idle, although I wish it would some days. But it looks like this is what I've always wanted. I want to be able to, like we said last week, I want to fly my jet past Chris's apartment, like what they showed in the video. That little clip caught my imagination and reminded me of when I was 15, 16 years old. 15, 16. What does that remind me? Daft Punk right there. (laughs) (laughs) But it it just makes me think about those those days when I thought, you know, this would be so fun if I could just be in a big world 
with my buddies, and I don't care what the objectives are. There could be all sorts of objectives, but I want to kill my buddies in this open <laughs> world and be able to take that tank, be able to take that jet, just be able to zoom by the other guys, be able to r- go in a car race, get out of our car, shoot at each other, tuck some grenades at some cops, hop in a plane, do a plane race before we shoot each other down in a dogfight, <laughs> and then get mixed up in the crowd so nobody sees us anymore. So Just pretend I've, we're walking also, down the street. I've heard that uh, that you can do online questing as well. That's in multiplayer. Yeah, that I've would heard be that great. There's, so uh, online co-op, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Too. Like, uh, they were saying that there's certain quests and stuff that you can do. I don't know. I keep using the word quest, but anyways... It's uh, certain missions, I guess, that you can do that require X amount of people. And X could be two, could be five, could be ten. Um, it doesn't matter, like, how many people you sort of have together. There's going to be something, a mission out there, that you can all partake in. Which, that's so cool. Yeah, I'm starting to get sold on this game, just that I'm, my I'm only EVP um, aspect. Like I joked with my friends last night, I'm sold because my parents already bought it for me and it's free. Ha! Huh. So nice. there, everybody who doesn't have a free copy. <laughs> I, just hope, I just really hope they beta test this a lot, because the one thing that's going to make or break, and I hate to bring this up again, but uh, this, like, SimCity, you got to have those those servers, man. Those servers need to be solid. You have 16 people. If you have that on a, on a team or on a server, you need to make sure your, your, your servers are running, like, fine. Because if this is one of those games, if you have any, like, bugs, lag, like, if, if any, cause that's going to turn off everybody. Yeah, it pro- well, it'll deter for sure. But, I mean, like Red Dead Redemption, they did that. I mean, it wasn't uh, it wasn't phenomenal, but, I mean, they had online PvP shoot 'em up style that was it was solid. It may, it may not have been graphically amazing, but at least the gameplay was there, right? I just don't want them to fix on the go. I want them to have oh, a solid yeah. product out yeah. and then just minor things. Well, I mean, this is one of the things they're highlighting, right? So they should get it right whenever they yeah. release it. Yeah, yeah, it sick. looks it looks solid right now, and uh, but you know, like you say, so have a lot of games in the past. But it looks uh, it's got me even more excited than I was in the last podcast. Like I just can't wait. Like four weeks, man, four weeks. So this is gonna be the last GTA on the PS3. It, yeah, I, yeah. Well, it has to be because be. uh, we've got a huge release date coming out, which is our last piece of uh, news: the PS4 release date confirmed. As of November 15th this year in the U.S. Oh, yeah. We got Pretty PlayStation 4. excited about that. Pretty excited. And you know what? $399. $399. The PS2, when it came out, was 5 Was 500 was 5 or 6 I paid four sixteen ninety nine for mine. I bought it at Walmart. Everywhere else was four ninety nine. Okay. And I uh, bought that the first week it came out. Yeah, I remember Walmart. that. I also read today that PS4 pre-orders... Today, uh, what's the date today? August the August 22nd. 22nd. Yep. It has already surpassed the amount of PlayStation 3 sold on release date. Oh, that is disgusting. That's disgusting. Wow. That is crazy. And, and you know what? That just reminds me of the, um, when we were talking, I don't know if we mentioned this last week, but um, if you go to online and you, and you search GameStop, um, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4, uh, GameStop revealed that. I think they believe, as soon as the DRM was mentioned, uh, 60 to 70 percent of everyone who pre-ordered an Xbox One switched to the PS4. Yeah. You know what? I think the system's going to be exactly how the PlayStation 2 was. Just sold like I, I, I'm like almost 100 percent sure the PS2 is the best-selling console ever. Oh yeah. Yeah, because it was the longest living console, and they still made games for it. I think I think actually they still make games for it in Japan out there. <laughs> okay. Well, no, wait, wait. Well, for longest lasting, they still they just released a uh, or are going to be releasing an SNES game. Pretty sh- pretty soon. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I wish oh, I had whoa, whoa, thought whoa. about this before we started talking. That is such a cool. Who's segue. releasing an SNES game? Ah, uh, you guys talk. I'll figure it out. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm excited for the PlayStation 4. I've, I'm, I'm so close to not. I don't know if I want to pre-order it or kind of wait and make up my mind later. But I'm getting one. Like. Uh, the first week, uh, second week. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, what I kind of want to see happen is somebody like try it, doesn't like yeah. it, I'll get it for like fifty bucks cheaper. I'm definitely getting it for Christmas. Yeah, that see, makes... that's the thing. Like, it's it's Christmas for sure. Mostly, for me personally, it's because of all the new games that are coming out in January and stuff. Oh man! Uh, but I kind of want the dust settle just slightly. 
yeah. just slightly. Let's let a couple patches release or whatever. See what happens. See how the news breaks. Everybody loves it. I'm sure it's going to have great reviews. Like, I'm certain of it. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, this might be a little evil, but I want to see how bad the, the the Xbox One does in the market as well. I want to see a tank. I want to see yeah, competition, I do too. but... Oh, you it, know what? And Xbox One tanking isn't as scary as uh, the Wii U tanking. Not really. The Wii U tanking means Nintendo could actually go under. And that, you know, like I would love, I don't want that to happen. I want Nintendo to suffer, and I want them to rebound and blow our minds in five years. But I want, Xbox is owned by Microsoft. Come on. It's not, it's, it's a drop in the bucket, right? Yeah. We're going to have Xbox One fail miserably, and they're going to be like, oh, man, that sucked. Man, we shouldn't do that again. And then next gen, they're going to do the same thing they did with the difference between the Xbox and the PS2, right? Xbox wasn't as good as PS2. Like you just said, it was the best-selling console of all time. What are we going to do? We made this great system, and everybody wanted it. Mm -hmm. Let's do that again five, six, seven, eight years from now. That's okay, funny. yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be maybe, maybe a low point in video games for the past 20 years, right? That's okay, Right? Things go up and down. Yep. We still have the PS3 and PCs and handheld systems to play with. Well, look like back back when uh, Atari and Intellivision were going head to head and having like like TV commercial feuds. When it comes to space games, nobody compares to Atari. Excuse me. Have you compared them to Intellivision? Intellivision? Sure, they've got great space games. Like Intellivision Space Battle. I didn't know. And now there's Space Armada and the Incredible Astro Smash. I didn't know. Here, compare for yourself. In television, Space Games from Mattel Electronics. Once you compare, you'll know. Oh, yeah. We're better. No, that looks like junk. Look at our system. It plays the same game twice as good. Ours like is propaganda. That was our crazy. Yeah. And look what happened in television. For whatever reason, it tanked, right? I think it might have been like E.T. or something. E.T. Home phone. Uh, no, that was why Atari it did, tanked. Yeah, but it was titles so far. But it was, uh, it was, it was some, it was a game. Somebody out there should should uh, message me when they hear this and tell me what game it was that uh, decided why Atari went forward instead of in television. But it it sounds to me a lot like that. Thirty years later. Yeah. And uh, another thing too to look at is that the uh, the PS Vita will be compatible with the PS4. I have a PS Vita. I haven't touched it probably for a good half year, so I'm looking forward to maybe they integrate and bring out some new titles for it. Um, yeah, I've, I've really neglected my Vita. It's just nothing has really grabbed me. The last thing I played on it was Uncharted that my friend nice. Seb gave me. Uh, for Uncharted, Christmas so Christmas. Sweet. such a solid game. Yeah, it was really Naughty fun. Naughty Dog. Uh, I'm the biggest fanboy right now. Playing yeah. Last of Us, so ten okay. out of ten. Can I interrupt to oh. bring back my brain fart that came that came up a few minutes Please ago? Because I have heard. Can you yeah, just get, slip I, in here and interrupt us? You know the hand shufflings back and forth. That's what I'm feeling right now for everybody listening. It's so exciting. <laughs> Nightmare Busters. All those people who are screaming this out listening to the podcast. Brian, it's Nightmare Busters. Nightmare Busters. It's called Nightmare Busters. It's an <laughs> SNES game uh, that is going to be released for the Super Nintendo and the Super Famicom. It's going to be compatible for those systems. First game to be released in the United States for these machines since 1998. Uh, it is what? going to, yep, it is going to be sense. shipped this is the exciting thing. Game cartridge with authentic plastic shell. Excellent. Oh, color, cool. Full color instruction manual and a sturdy cardstock box printed in full color. It's legit going to be a, legit. a Super Nintendo game. Was this on it, a go go or something? Uh. Like no, I, it probably was at some point. The developer is Super Fighter Team, if you want to look them up. <laughs> Uh, Nightmare Busters, again, everybody, it's really exciting. It, right here, I'm going to read this little blurb to you. Nightmare Busters is now sold out. I'm sorry, everybody. Hopefully, that'll be fixed in the future. Who knows? The game is scheduled to ship in 2013. Uh, I don't know when this is last updated, but as soon as the official release date is confirmed, it will be announced on our website as well as by email to all our pre-order customers and mailing list subscribers. 
uh, and it shows how to be put on the mailing list. So hopefully they are able to print more games because I am absolutely 100% on board with buying I didn't know about that, and I will definitely look into that. Yeah, I'm totally going to email them and see if we can – maybe even, uh, you know, all of our vast uh, celebrityhood could get us a little (laughs) pre-order, you know. (laughs) Shake the tree. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm glad you brought the Super Nintendo, because this leads us into our next segment, which is... Retro Game Review of the Week! And our next segment is Retro Game Review of the Week, and this week the game is F-Zero for the Super Nintendo. And if you looked at our channel, you'll see that there was a, an unboxing for uh, Andy, the big birthday boy. So uh, he's, this is actually, well, I'll let him talk about it. I'm just going to show It almost sounds sacrilegious, an unboxing. It kind of felt like it a little bit. You had no choice. It, the, it's true. I didn't have a choice. Was, stupid yeah. handshake and friendship and all that jazz. Ugh, friendship. Um, <laughs> ugh. So F-Zero for the Super Nintendo is my most nostalgic game I can think of. It was the game that, well, I got a Super Nintendo, and we all got Super Mario that came with the Nintendo, and that game is amazing. But, but, big but, I also got, big but, <laughs> I also got F-Zero at the exact same time, uh, so I had a variety of, of game to play. Um, thank you, my parents, you'll hear this eventually, I'm sure. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that was the most addicting racing game I've ever played. It had kind of piss poor graphics, uh, but it was a release title, and it caught on. It caught on so fast. I got everybody playing it. It was it, uh, it just had so much more than than anything that the NES had provided thus far with racing games. Like uh, the barriers were little explosions, they're little bombs, they were all whatever energy this? energy pads or whatever, and you drive over racing, them, and your car would start to degrade. Yeah. And you get little, you know, you get blinking and you're about to die and all of a sudden you run into another one and boom, your car explodes. But you could go into the healing zone every time that you went across the, the starting race Important. or the, the start line. Yep. You can go into the little healing zone and stop your car and re- recharge your car. Get yourself ready for the next, you know, the next way around. Now, do you think they were hybrids? If they're, no, they're, they're yeah. spaceships. <laughs> they were advanced. They were way oh, advanced. Oh, they were doing the whole electric car before we did the electric yeah. car. Yeah. Prius um, did the research based off of F Zero, but uh, that's <laughs> that's where my favorite Smash Bros. character comes from, uh, Captain Falcon. And it's funny because he's not really the main character. There isn't really a main character in 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 F Zero. It's kind of just pick your favorite style of racing car. You like you like Bowser slow and fast. You take the pink one. You kind of like everything all around like Mario. You go F Zero. Right. You like the super fast one. Go with the yellow one. Right. Yoshi. If you like, exactly. Yeah, like you really want Yoshi or, or Toad or something? Extremely fast. Go with Yoshi. Go with Yoshi. Go with the pink one. Um, yeah, that game was that game was phenomenal. The the tracks were were legendary. Uh, you know, s- huge speed ups and and launch you off. Uh, if you went off the track, much like much like Mario Kart, you you were you know dead and you had to respawn all that jazz. Mm-hmm. But, but I don't know. I really really like that game. Uh, I could play it forever for. Just it has so much to it. It was so awesome Some racing spaceships at that time in my life. Phenomenal. Yeah. It was. Uh, it's really funny. I have the strangest memory with this game. Was uh, strangest game? Well, I was a strange child, right? <laughs> but uh, like I like, mentioned, I in, <laughs> like I mentioned in the first podcast, uh, I'm a substitute teacher, and one of my uh, teachables, which isn't actually a word, but <laughs> used by teachers all the time, is uh, English. And the first piece of creative writing I was ever proud of was fourth grade Miss Kennedy's class. Uh, we we were uh, you know in a normal regular school that had uh, you know whatever 25 kids in it, and we were all told write a story about whatever you want. Right? I want it to be two pages single spaced. <gasps> we all freaked out, right? Nine year olds, two pages uh-huh. single spaced in our uh, you know block writing that we had at the time just learning cursive you know like one year into learning cursive so we were all uh, like excited let's okay let's go do this like this is going to be like one of the hardest things we've ever done i went home and wrote a story about it was uh like i you know i couldn't think of anything right like i i, I was thinking of all these ideas i based my 
whole story off of the death winds of F Zero, <laughs> where you're in the level and you're getting blown through the desert <laughs> by these winds, these shifting <laughs> winds. <laughs> Can you imagine her reading that? Yeah. Oh, uh, this kid's but, a genius. <laughs> but well, that's the thing Hybrids. is I got an I got an A, right? Uh, yeah, I got an A. It was crazy. It was one of the like I wasn't an A student back then at all. But Deathwind, right? It was uh, I can't remember level four. Uh, it looked like a weird desert thing. There was a skull guy in the background. It was, I think, in the first world. It, it, we, I, I can't remember all the details about it, but it was, it was great. And I, I talked about this guy walking through the desert, getting blown around and everything. Right, two pages isn't very much to write. And I was able to get this whole story down. And it was, pro- it was definitely my first time I was ever proud of something I wrote creatively. Nice. And now I'm an English teacher. <laughs> there you yeah. go. F Zero so, inspired you. Yeah, I'm really a music teacher, but whatever. So <laughs> you do enjoy it, but obviously you enjoy the game. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I played this game all the time, right? So the yeah. only thing I could think of was a level in F Zero because I played this game so much. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. That... I wasn't creative at all. Like this was just literally. So, I mean, oh, this is what I'm doing tonight. So I'm gonna write a story about so it. So it inspires like the young boys, like. Well, this, just me. For for me, well, but for me, I was like this game of like spaceships. Oh my god, uh, you know, like power ups and my car explodes yeah. and it, it, you kind of didn't really get all this before. Like, mind you, I never owned a, like a regular Nintendo. This is like my first console that I ever had. So like everything is is such a huge nostalgia factor, um, and it brings back so many memories. But uh, I don't know. At the time, I think it was just so. Mario didn't do it for me, I guess, at the time. Like, oh, whatever, a little guy jumping around. But drive a spaceship! (laughs) 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 I'm glad you brought up, Brian, about the drawing, because I'll just be real quick with this. But in grade two, I had this teacher named Mrs. Short, and she more or less gave us the same thing. She's like, I want you to do two pages of anything. So I ended up doing four pages. I had two pages fully colored of the the dungeon in Super Mario World. Nice. Like, you know, the dark one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I drew everything with dark crayon, like, dead on, too, by memory, and it was nothing wrong. <laughs> and then the other two pages was me describing each level in it. And she's like, what, do you do anything else to play video games? And you go, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I watched Return of the Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that was it. it just triggered that. But uh, so great. how I feel about F Zero, uh, I liked it. Um, I liked it a lot. I didn't like it as much as Andy, but it was a very uh, important stepping stone in my um, kind of game racing to the next whatever game racing types I'd play that genre. Because uh, that game got me into Top Gear Rally on the, on the, on the new Super Nintendo. Then I played Mario Kart. Like that was the one game that I enjoy driving games. And uh, I want to play whatever more. So uh, I, I feel the same way as Andy does. So we have to give it a quick review, all of us. We'll start with Brian. Uh, out of 10, Brian, how many uh, noops do you feel for it? I really enjoyed it, same as Andy. I'm going to give it eight. Oh, nice. I have to give it the exact same amount of noops. Eight for Andy. Yeah. And I'm going to give it... I'm going to give it seven and a half. Nice. It's, uh, it, it's, 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 for me, I mean, it, it doesn't have all of the stuff that, that, uh, you know, that Smash and others and It was an important game. And, but, yeah, it was important. Yeah, right. that's right. Important. So, we'll go into our next segment. Geek food! Um, nom, 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 oh, nom, 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 And that's right, geek food of the week and this week geeky movie actually i'm really excited about it we all are pretty excited about this this is pretty cool uh it's matrix and if you don't know what the matrix is wow where have you been yeah, what that's our heavy rock <laughs> where you mean where were you 10 years ago yeah, that's right because <laughs> that's right if it wasn't for matrix we wouldn't have any slow-mo gun time i know kung fu show me oh exactly. and every time In somebody video games bends... and movies Bend over uh, backwards. Yeah, anytime forward. anybody bends over backwards in the real world, oh, you matrixed. Yeah, like his his head was behind his butt saying, I can dodge bullets with his head. That's right. Peeking out like a turret. Can you fly this helicopter? 
Hold on. Yeah. Do you think this is area Now reading? I can. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> trying to hit me and hit me. So we're talking about uh, just we, our favorite movie was The Matrix, but we, we sort of just want to just uh, nutshell all of them together and how we felt about The Matrix movies, uh, how important it was to us. and uh, Well, our favorite movie out of The Matrix trilogy was the first, was the first Matrix. Matrix. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Just to clarify, that's yeah, it, not my favorite ever. Yeah, really. it was like a roller coaster that kind of went pretty good and then just went straight down after the third. Well, the third movie kind of <laughs> lost yeah, its the wheels. Third. It fell they, right they just off the track. Crushed. But, Godfather 3. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah. Can't go that far with it. <laughs> so yeah, when when uh, when I say the movie Matrix to you, Brian, what's the first thing that jumps uh, out at you? Uh, what what man, sticks out? Was, Matrix? Yeah, okay, okay. It was the graphics, right? For its time, it was exciting, right? Like the, it was people doing things that people couldn't do. It was some crazy ideas that could totally be real, right? That that. Everybody's kind of had the thing go through their head. Like one one big one big thing that has gone through uh, my head, maybe anybody else has said, is maybe is this world revolving around me? Is everybody? Am I imagining this? Right? Like I know it's a very self-centered view, but I'm I know I've talked to people who've well, also thought that. Time. Like, you know, yeah. Like I'm not saying to twist. secret, like to to <laughs> seriously think about it, but maybe you know, like it's just it's maybe so this reality isn't what like it's perceived to be and that's what this whole movie is is like right. it's everything isn't what you think it is yeah. do you believe that my being stronger or faster has anything to do with my muscles in this place you think that's air you're breathing now and as the movies progressed it got deeper like you went down that rabbit hole right like yeah. it got deeper and deeper and that was exciting like it was really an inventive idea that you know you don't see very often I love the fact that the first movie was a, was complete. Yeah. There was no loose ends. Lo, like there was no necessary need for a second movie to follow up. That like I, I just I loved how the first one was complete, and you can rewatch it and and you get the whole thing all over again, and it wraps it up with a ni nice little package, and you you just you're always sitting there in awe like, yeah, this what. You know, am I living in this alternate universe, right? And at the time, uh, I don't know, I was a certain age and just starting with computers and not really, like, internet was not as big as, you know, as it is now, obviously. Dial up and chat lines. But that was crazy. Like, that was, that was such a... It wasn't as far-fetched as, as it kind of was made out to be. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it almost felt like, in a way, that it was sort of possible, like, just how Brian described that it could be a reality, but you know what I mean, in, in this alternate reality. Like, uh, uh, the martial arts was awesome in it. And I like Very the good. idea that you could upload and download martial arts, like, while he was training Neo. Um, the, the story progression and then the, uh, the development of characters through the first movie was phenomenal. They just took their time, they explained each one, they, uh, they, they didn't seem, make it seem too corny, they didn't have any stupid Jar Jar Binks type of character. Was like, <laughs> they just stuck to the story, and they, and they created something for a more mature audience, and they didn't really care about it. And they didn't, they didn't really give you that sense of joy either. They kept it a little dark, a little Oh, it was serious. absolutely, absolutely like, dark. You know, yeah. they, they always gave you that, like, here's our ship in what was Earth. Like, yeah. here we are this much, like, later, and we're still in absolute ruin. Um, they just they just kept that in there. It always gave you that sense of defeat, but a fighting chance. Yeah. And uh, oh, it was just I, man, I gotta give yeah. If I was to rate that, that's high. That's so high. Yeah, I, I would definitely give this movie like a high rating too. And I'm talking first movie specifically. The yeah. trilogy was 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 good, but it really didn't need to be. It was cool that they went on and they did a little more and it was a little more action packed because the first one was story. Heavy, driven, yeah. very story heavy, which was which was very cool. I had the patience to go through it, so it was for me it was perfect. 
Uh, the second one was a lot of fight, a lot of action scenes. Yeah, the second, I enjoy A lot of people said they didn't like the second oh, one. Oh, I like the second one. But, man, that, just the, just alone, the scene on the highway, the whole chase yeah. scene, that was amazing. Well, the, it was like stick the post in the ground and do do a circle kick of like five or six different, you know, agents. It's well, like agents jumping on the truck.